You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. We just can't quit Carter Carls. I tell you what, guy went from covering Notre Dame to covering Florida State to now covering AM. I he just we just we just can't quit him. He's good enough to join us now to help us preview LSU and Texas AM from Tiger Stadium on Saturdays with Gigum247 on Twitter at Carter Carls. Thanks for the time, man. How are you? Good. I appreciate you having me, man. It's always our pleasure. Hey man, give me a little bit of a vibe check in College Station since uh since the Jimbo firing here as they play out the string. Yeah, things have uh, sort of settled down as far as just the, the shock that, that happened when he was fired after the uh, Mississippi State game. Um, but yeah, in the middle of a coaching search, um, I know they're trying to get it done before the transfer portal opens on December 4th. So kind of in the uh, heat of it now, and I, I would expect it to get announced within the next uh, week or so. I'll come back to the coaching search if I could at the end. But what is getting more attention there in College Station? Is it this finale against LSU, or is it the coaching search? Oh, the coaching search, no doubt. I mean, I think there's sort of a sense of like, LSU could beat A&M by 70, and it's like, who cares? The, the next coach is what really matters right now. Now, obviously, a big focus has been roster retainment and trying to keep these players happy. It's why they kind of did what they did um, as far as timing goes with letting go Fisher. It kind of gave them some time to adjust. And, uh, you know, had they done that after the LSU game, then, you know, oh, crap, you're, you're kind of having to run and hurry and get a coach in place after the portal opens. And so I think that's why they did what they did. And ever since then, that's been kind of what has dominated the attention for sure. Carter, is that when you say that there's way more focus on the coaching search than the LSU game, I would assume that's the program at large in the fan, but what about the players? Do they seem focused on Saturday? Not this last Saturday, not not one bit. I mean, mm. they they looked like a team that was sleepwalk, sleepwalking. Um, they really started off poorly. Obviously, they had the pick six on the second offensive play of the game against Abilene Christian, and yeah, it's just kind of an uninspiring win, but I think that, hey, you wanted, if you can pick which game to have that, it'd be the ACU, and um, I, I think they kind of considered ACU like a bye week to, to allow them to adjust. I don't think they were expecting to come out firing. Um, I do still think there is a lack of focus uh, among the team. I, this is a like once in a century kind of move, a $76.8 million buyout and the timing of it and just how talented this roster is and the expectations that they had. This is sending shockwaves, not just in the A&M locker room, but in the college football world at large. So yeah, I, I wouldn't expect them to be entirely focused, but I mean, LSU and Baton Rouge, Players are going to get up for that. That there, it is going to be a game where uh, they obviously, you know, want to, want to go all out for. So I do think they'll be more focused this week, but I still think they're pretty distracted. Uh, Carter Carls, gig him two four seven. He's on Twitter at Carter Carls. I give him a follow. It's Carls with a K. Um, who's going to play quarterback uh, against LSU Saturday? Who's going to be the quarterback? You said, yeah. I'm thinking Jalen Henderson. Uh, it's, it hasn't been entirely decided yet, but Max Johnson's got three cracked ribs on his left side. You know, left-handed quarterback, kind of hard to throw. He got cracked ribs. He played through it. You know, he had cracked ribs that he played through, but it's going to be hard. I know they, they rested in the last two games in hopes that he could be ready for this game, but I'm kind of in see it when I believe it mode when it comes to him playing. So what does the offense look like with Henderson as opposed to what it looked like with Max Johnson or Connor Wigman? Yeah, Henderson's another lefty, uh, a lot more mobile than, than Johnson. So um, I think he's someone that is going to use his legs a lot more. Um, he's still a third-team quarterback, very inexperienced, uh, came from Fresno State. 
where he only played kind of as a as a reserve there. Um, looked great in his first action against Mississippi State and kind of fell back down to earth against ACU. Um, but yeah, I mean, he can, he can make some throws. It's just, it, it's just not all there with him yet. He, he lacks kind of that experience, but the playmaking ability is what you want to watch with him. He, he can, you know, run around the pocket, you know, run for a 20 yard gain, you know, run around and, and complete a 30 yard pass down the field. It's, it's not like the typical third team quarterback who walks into the game and is just kind of dink and dunk. So He'll make some plays out there, but but definitely a big drop off from uh, Connor Wigman. Hey, look, Carter, it's no secret LSU's defense is, is atrocious. What what? Um, <laughs> I mean, but look, when you're into game twelve, you just have to call it what it is. Um, yeah. What what might A and M have success with offensively against LSU? Yeah, well, I mean, with Henderson using his legs, I think could be a big advantage. I mean, I think the thing with LSU is you, you kind of expected Harold Perkins to be this dynamic p- pass rusher again this year. You know, LSU hasn't been very good as far as stacking the quarterback and, and the pass rush and all that kind of stuff. So I think for a struggling offensive line, that should give you an advantage to maybe, hey, give more time for these receivers downfield. I mean, they do have a lot of talent in that wide receiver room when it comes to Nia Smith and, and Moose Muhammad, Noah Thomas, Evan Stewart. And so, yeah, I think kind of the downfield passing game uh, may be where the advantage is. They've, they've taken more shots down the field uh, with Jalen Henderson these last couple games. So um, I, I think that could be something. And, and then, like I said, Henderson with his legs uh, could be a threat as well. Uh, flip it over to the to the defensive side. I think that's kind of the story, right, Carter? We know A and M's got yeah. a lot of talent on defense. It has, just hasn't always come together. Where is the maybe the consistent part of the strength of that defense right now? Well, they've got two fantastic linebackers, uh, Edger and Cooper. Uh, he's not up for the butt kiss award, which is crazy to me because I don't think there's been a better linebacker in the country. Uh, this season. He he has just been everywhere, leads the team in basically every category, will be a top 100 pick this next year. Uh, Torian York, as a true freshman, you know, three-star recruit, has way exceeded his expectations. And then the defensive line uh, has also been, you know, a, a threat to be reckoned with. Like, they've, I think they have almost 40 sacks this season. Um, and you're just loaded with talent there with guys like McKinley Jackson, who will be, you know, a draft pick next year, Walter Nolan, you know, former five-star recruit. And, you know, there's just a lot of uh, talent on that defensive line. And, uh, you know, they've been a lot better at stopping the run this year. Only really bad game against the run was against, um, uh, Tennessee, but it's that secondary where the, the big question is, and, that's what you got to be worried about when you're facing a team like LSU that's got uh, guys like Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas. It's not a good recipe uh, for that defense. I mean, nobody's really stopped the LSU offense. The feeling here is like they're going to get theirs. It's just can the defense get a, enough stops to give the offense an opportunity yeah. to, to build a lead. Um, I, I know the line's 11 and a half. It's double digits. Uh, is this a game that you expect LSU to be able to win and win comfortably? I think so. I mean, I think LSU, you know, still pretty motivated, could get 10 wins. I know the season hasn't gone the way they would have hoped. I mean, if they just had an average defense, you're probably talking about a playoff team right now. Um, (laughs) Believe me, brother, that's been the story here for about a month now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Daniels is still playing for a Heisman. I know he's the favorite, and, and, you know, he's going to be motivated to put up some numbers, but – um, I just think the a and team is still a little distracted, has some holes. I mean, they just it's a bad matchup defensively because every good passing team they've faced so far has torched them, and they're not really good against mobile quarterbacks. And so I think Daniels is going to light them up. I think uh, their receivers will light them up. And, you know, I don't know if it'll be a total blowout, but I do think there's potential that that, that could happen. Carter, before you go, and Carter Carls is our guest uh, on Twitter at Carter Carls, uh, Gigum247. Um, 
could you just give us the the Cliff's Notes thumbnail version of uh, uh, the catch up on this the Sanum coaching search? Yeah, a lot of crazy rumors out there, and no uh, we, we, <laughs> we we have. I mean, there are people speculating. Oh, Ryan Day might be a candidate, and it's like, okay, let's let's calm down a little bit. Uh, but there's been some consistent names with the search. Jeff Trailer being one of them at UTSA. Uh, Mike Elko, the former A and M defensive coordinator, now at Duke. Um, and then you got guys who were maybe long shots. I mentioned Day. I think he is way outside of the realm of possibility, but. Certainly someone that has been mentioned, uh, Kalen DeBoer at uh, Washington as well. Um, and then Jed Fish from Arizona has been a guy uh, who has been mentioned to me a few times um, in the last week as somebody that, you know, there's mutual interest there. But again, I think that the timeline is the portal opens December 4th. Um, I think a and wants to have their guy right before that. But then you also have potential candidates who could be in conference championship games. And, you know, hey, like Kalen DeBoer may be in the playoffs. So it's kind of tri- tricky logistics-wise if you're still holding out hope for some of these long shot guys. But I still expect A&M to get this done uh, before the portal opens because I know that's kind of their primary objective here. He is Carter Carls on Twitter at Carter Carls, K-A-R-E-L-S, Gig 247. We appreciate it, man. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for the time. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, man. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.